As we've been discussing, the government has announced its intent to extend the 75% wage subsidy program beyond its original June 6 deadline. That announcement came on the heels of a particularly devastating jobs report. But will that be enough to bring jobs back? Carla Qualtro is the Minister of Employment and Workforce Development. She joins us from Vancouver, I believe. I hope I'm right, Minister. Hi, nice to see you. Hi, thank you. Yes, I'm here in BC. Okay, good Good to have you with us again, Minister. I know that the Prime Minister said that the details of the wage subsidy extension would be announced uh, next week, but can you give us a sense, and, and more importantly, can you give viewers who run businesses and want to be able to plan using this program going forward a sense of, are we talking about an extension that will just be short, such as a, you know one month, or are you thinking something more long-term? I think it'll be longer than a month, Ashley, but I think we're going to have to wait um, to next week. We're still working out those details. It was really important to us, as you know, you know, horrible, worrisome job numbers today. We wanted to signal the businesses that we are not four weeks from now going to stop with the wage subsidy. Um, even more importantly, we're seeing some really positive uptake on the wage subsidy. In just one week, we've had 120,000 businesses uh, totaling 1.7 million workers be uh, approved for this wage subsidy. So if you look into a month from now, hopefully that means the numbers of unemployment will go down by that many. My understanding was that those who uh, applied for the wage subsidy initially when it opened at the beginning of last week would be able to access the money if they were approved as early as yesterday. Did that happen? Um, I don't know for sure if it happened. That was my understanding as well. Uh, I have to tell you, I've been um, mired in job numbers for the past 24 hours. So um, that was what I understood, but I'd have to get back to you to confirm that. Have you had any, I guess an, on a broader level, any indication of any issues with the delivery of uh, sort of the technical aspect of it? I'm just asking because, again, for people who are watching tonight wondering, uh, maybe I don't have it yet. Is it a technical thing? Am I not approved? That, that kind of thing. Any signs so no, far? No, not, not. Just like the CERB, we've managed okay. to do this very seamlessly through the CRA, and it seems to be going very well. Speaking of the CERB, uh, I listened to the Prime Minister's comments today, and he didn't explicitly say it wouldn't be extended, but he certainly didn't say that it would. Can you clarify for us, is the CERB four months and that's it? Well, right now, as you know, it's actually technically 16 weeks. So between now and October, people can access it for up to 16 weeks. So, well, if you've taken it from March 15th every day, you'll be maxed out by July 15th. But if you've had periods of employment, if you started at one or two periods in, you can actually access it for up to 16 weeks over a six month period. So we don't know yet, um, although we're talking very seriously about extending the number of weeks you can access it. But of course, as you can appreciate, it's legislated. So we're gonna have to go back to parliament uh, and have that conversation with all parties. So just to, just to clarify what you just said, you are considering the possibility of extending it beyond 16 weeks. It's just that it would, it would entail a legislative process. Yeah, I mean, nothing is off the table, as the Prime Minister said. We're really hopeful that the wage subsidy will be moving forward the vehicle for preparing the country and businesses for coming out of this in the most positive way and as quickly as possible. So, you know, again, the more people on payroll, the less people unemployed, the better for all of us. And certainly even at $2,000 a month, there's more people, more pe pe a lot more people will be getting a lot more at, from the wage subsidy. So when do you make the decision, I guess, about what the appropriate balance is? My, I understand what you're saying, that, you know, if, if in two months time, the hope is that more people have moved away from CERB and back on the payroll. Is there a metric by which you judge, OK, not enough, you know, there's five and a half million Canadians who have either lost half their hours or who have completely lost their job. If only two million are back on the payroll, do you have to keep the CERB? Like, are those the kinds of metrics you're going to be looking at to make that decision? Absolutely. So we'll know after another week or so how much uptake there's been in the first couple weeks of the wage subsidy. We know also that for people who are on the CERB, they can return to EI entitlement after the CERB. So for a good portion of workers, they have EI available to them after the CERB. But again, not everybody, which is why we put forth the CERB. Um, conversations very alive, a little premature um, as we look at the first week or two of wage subsidy numbers to determine exactly when and what. And also we want to get people working and incentivize work. When will you make that decision, though? And I and, and I I'm guessing it's you're, you're not able to provide me with a certain day, but I'm asking only because, again, I keep putting myself in the shoes of people who are depending on CERB for their livelihood right now and are worried and about totally not get getting that. hired totally back. We are, we are entering the third four-week period very soon, and people want to know after the fourth four-week period, for those people who have exhausted it, if there's going to be something after that. I suspect in the coming weeks is the best I can give you, but we're very aware of that and very mindful of what this means for uncertainty for people.
So the wage subsidy CERB plus the SEBA, the, the emergency business account, sort of make up the parcel of what your government has offered so far. And I have to tell you that the number one group of people whom I hear from who are still falling through the cracks, and I know it's it's not necessarily, I, I mean, I know those programs have covered a lot of people, but the, the, the ones that I hear from constantly are those who employ contractors who don't meet the payroll requirements, uh, who are self-employed, uh, who Double pay themselves hired. through de dividends. And and I have asked your you know members of your government, including yourself, multiple times, how are these people going to be covered? Uh, they, they, they truly are having trouble being able to meet their, their business expenses right now. And I know they can access CERB, but that doesn't cover their rent. Uh, you know, is there an answer for them? Well, I think that the answer is that we're working on it. And I know how unsatisfying that sounds to even me as I say it, but we know that it's an issue. I know I've spoken as recently as today with the Minister of Finance about this. And this is an issue that a number of groups from across the country have raised with us, both in terms of accessing the commercial rent support and the SEBA. And even the wage subsidy in some cases is limited by the type of business structure you have. So we know this, just like with the CERB, we're gonna have to make some tweaks to make it more accessible. I just don't have any details to share with you right now. How close are you to coming up with something for them? And and I know I sound like a broken record, but I, I just, my, my inbox is full of messages of people yeah. who are worried about not being able to open their business in a week. I hear you and, and and I sympathize. I too get them as a member of parliament. I get them from locally here around in my region and across the country. Um, the best I can offer you with is within the upcoming weeks, we're gonna have a lot of this ironed out. And and again, this is, we are changing the train as the train's on the tracks. And, and as as difficult as that is, it's the best we can do. So no no estimate whatsoever. I mean, it, it, it and I'm trying to be fair here, but it has been, you know, six weeks of other economic measures. Understood, absolutely, and that's why we need to turn our mind to it. But, you know, yesterday we announced the Essential Workers Top Up, which is a massive um, investment of billions of dollars in essential workers across the country. Um, certainly addresses a lot of the concern that people had about the $1,000, able to earn $1,000 on CERB, um, and that's somehow disincentivizing work for essential workers. We're hoping now that that won't be the case, that they'll be earning more uh, significantly and as they deserve more um, with the essential workers top up so that they're not in the position of earning less than someone who's earning CERB. Let me ask you a bit about the, the essential worker piece and, and particular people who are uh, having to work right now in the face of some, some pretty worrisome conditions for them when it comes to their health. Uh, both yourself and the Prime Minister were asked earlier today, should people be going to work if they don't feel safe? Uh, I didn't feel like there was a super clear answer. Can you, can you answer that question now? Yeah, I certainly can. It's certainly in Canada, we have a right to refuse work if we don't feel safe. So that's the starting point. But for me, the solution is to work with employers and have public safe, pardon, public health officials work with employers to create safe workplaces. What we want to do is to get people back into their workplaces. But there's, we can't force workers to go back to work. And I wouldn't want to. I mean, gosh, I was a human rights lawyer before this. We would never want to do that. And my message is very clear. Let's work. Let's find a solution in the workplace. Um, and until that, so until somebody doesn't feel safe, they don't have to go to work. But are they covered by the CERB, the CERB, if they well, make the that CERB decision? eligibility, as you know, it's not quite a simple yes or no to that. If they're if they made five thousand in the last year, if they're if they have no income now, because there may be people who aren't going to work but still getting paid, so they wouldn't qualify for the CERB. If they if they have not quit their job, so there would be people in the position of refusing work, not working, but not quit. So um, there's a whole bunch of conditions that have to be. There's nothing that precludes somebody if they meet all the conditions. I guess, you know, what's motivating the question is what we've seen in Alberta at Cargill. And we've spoken to some of the workers. We've spoken to the union yeah. that represents the workers. There are a number of people who did not feel safe going back to work. And, uh, you know, the prime minister didn't want to talk about that situation. He didn't want to intervene in it. But they are asking for federal intervention. They feel like the province isn't isn't sort of taking care of their safety. It, should the federal government be doing more in that instance? And what is your message to workers specifically at Cargill who feel like it's not safe to go to work? Well, first of all, we have really important guidance available to employers and occupational health and safety. So my first message would be for employers to step up and create safe and healthy workplaces for their employees and not let not leave this to workers to have to make such a difficult call um, in such difficult times already. Um, 
my message to workers is very simply, you, you know what is at stake for you and your family. And I, you know, there are definite there are processes that you have to go through around refusal to work. There's there's inspections that happen. There are, you know, unions have uh, uh, guidelines in place and all of that. But at the end of the day, you have to feel safe. And you've got children or elders you're caring for. Make the decisions that are right for your family. Um, but employers, please, you know, get your people back and make them comfortable uh, and do the right thing by making sure they're safe. For those that decide not to go to work, though, is there? any coverage for them from the federal government. And I take your point that it depends on a whole host of things, but if other, you yeah, know. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that would be my answer again. It really depends on their personal circumstances, but as, you know, if they're not working uh, for COVID reasons, which this would be, um, if they haven't quit, and if they're not having income, they can apply for the CERB. You have to kind of follow the language of the attestation. I'm not meaning to be difficult, but there are definitely circumstances where they could apply. I've just got 30 seconds left, but the jobs report was certainly stark when it came to students. One in three young people are unemployed right now. When will you have the details for how they can apply to the emergency benefit? So I can give you some details now. It's going to be really similar to the CERB. It's going to be attestation based on a portal through CRA. You're going to have to swear to a couple, maybe three or four conditions that you meet. You're a student you're attending post-secondary um, it's going to be launched by the end of next week so by may 15th if not earlier again like with serb what i'd encourage students to do is get a my cra account is okay. to go online now set up because a lot of them don't have them just to be ready for direct deposit so they can get their money as soon as possible okay so they'll be able to apply by next week end of next week you think absolutely okay. if not earlier okay thank you very much for your time as always minister Thanks. qualtro appreciate it take care Unprecedented. That's how Statistics Canada is describing the jaw-dropping jaw numbers, job numbers out today. Canada lost nearly 2 million jobs last month. Add that to the 1 million jobs lost already in March. And the total number of jobs lost is more than 3 million since the pandemic hit Canada. We want to put some faces and stories to those numbers, though. Joining me now are two people who have lost their jobs. Carly Biro is a former event coordinator at the Stratford Theatre Festival. She joins us from Stratford. And Randy Graham is a former bed truck driver at Fast Trucking Services. He's with us from Estevan, Saskatchewan. Hi to both of you. Thank you very much for making time for us. Good afternoon. Uh, Randy, why don't I start with you? Tell me a bit about what you did and, and when you were laid off. We were, uh, well, what we do is is... Uh, obviously, everybody has seen a drilling rig, or I, I would think everybody has seen a drilling rig used for the purpose of drilling the, the uh, oil wells mm -hmm. uh, out here in Saskatchewan, Alberta, mainly. Um, what we do is we use heavy heavy equipment, trucks, big trucks. A bed truck specifically has a, a, a large bed on the back with a big winch, and we literally take the buildings of the rig apart uh, piece by piece and move them over where a truck and a trailer can then load it, haul it to what we call the new location. And uh, then we move over there with the bed trucks and basically put it all back together again. And before we are finished putting that all back together again, usually the rig crew has the derrick standing and they're getting ready to uh, make haul. And how long had you been doing that? I started doing this in the uh, mid '80s, and uh, I left for a little while, but then I've, I'm I'm back again. So I've been doing this for quite a while. Have you ever seen anything? I guess uh, any economic pressure like this? I mean, have you been doing it for that many decades? You've been through other sort of recessions or dips in the economy, but this is a, a real big one. Oh, I've been I've been around long enough to see slowdowns in the. Uh, economy and slowdowns in the patch and and uh, typically those are are government um, generated slowdowns kind of thing they what they usually have a hand in it um, or world pricing OPEC and they like to play around with things and so yeah I've seen these things before and and uh, nothing like this nothing like this and I hope we never see this again you and me both. Carly, what about you? Tell us a bit about what, what you were doing uh, and when you were laid off. Um, so I am an event coordinator, was an event coordinator. Um, pretty much my day-to-day -day was organizing different caterings, setting up different events, um, internal and external. So for staff like the accounting department having a lunch, we'd set that up, as well as larger companies coming in and using our space, then we'd 
set up that space for them and then make sure catering went okay and do tear down for them. Um, and then I was laid off on March 16th. So just at the beginning of all of this. And, and is that because there's basically no events, like there's no events happening? Is it a function exactly. of that? Exactly. Well, you're not allowed more than five people yeah. in a gathering, right? So yeah. it means that events are just completely off the table. And just to follow up with you, have you been able to access any of the government programs that were put forth? So there's wage subsidies to encourage people to hire their employees back, or there's the CERB. Have you utilized any of those? I utilize the CERB. And how are you finding it? Like, is it is it doing what you need it to do? Yes. Yeah, it's definitely helpful. It allows um, allows me to be able to pay my bills and stay on top of things, which is really nice. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't obviously allow for any savings, but it allows us to not lose our house, which is great. Randy, what about you? Have you been able to uh, use any of the government programs put forward so far? Yeah, we we laid off uh, quite a large uh, part of the workforce, so we aren't able to use the, uh, I, I'm not sure the name of the program, but there's company, the smaller companies that are still um, employing their uh, their workforce just at a reduced rate due to the assistance from the government so we basically were all just laid off and so the programs i guess would be ei and mm -hmm. the cerb and has that been a, a help to you oh absolutely it's a help to us uh, um, i mean without without uh, the assistance it would be a great deal more difficult yes absolutely so different economy different provinces are are reopening their economy at different speeds uh, there are lots of questions about sort of what the next few months, what the next six months looks like before things can, you know, quote unquote, become totally normal again when there's a vaccine, something to that effect. Uh, Randy, what is your what are what do you when you look out another few months or another six months, do you think you'll have your job back? Do you what what sort of what goes through your head? Uh, not positive, very, not very positive thoughts. I can tell you that right now. And, and uh, even if the COVID uh, pandemic issue has been reduced enough for the workforce and the fa the rephasing of the the economy. Um, the patch is in such dire straits here that I, I really can't put any kind of a timeline. It would be it would be impossible to put any timeline on whether when we will or if we will go back to work. Carly, events are, are certainly a, a big point of discussion. We've seen a number of governments that have released their phased out plan, put big gatherings right at the end, you know, right even towards a vaccine. What goes through your head when you're thinking about the next few months, the next six months? I'm really, it's really trying to look forward and hope that there's more government support coming out, especially for the entertainment industry. Um, or like a city like Stratford, like something like this just shuts down the entire city. We live off the tourism industry here. Everyone does. And it really just shuts down there, everyone's lives. If the government is listening right now and they're sort of in this spot where they're figuring out what their programs look like after this initial phase, after the initial phase of those programs are done. If they're listening right now, Carly, what's your message to them? that the entertainment industry needs financial help right now, or most of those programs won't be here when this is over. Randy, Randy same question to you. Uh, government's listening. I know there's a lot of consideration being given to uh, the sector itself. Like what, what might the federal government be able to do to help the patch more generally? Uh, but, but in addition, in your own situation, what, what is your message for Ottawa tonight? Well, especially Ottawa. I mean, our, our provincial government is not an issue. They're on board with uh, with getting the economy back to get to, to running up and running again. And uh, as far as the uh, federal government, it, it gets it's pretty basic. If if uh, if we would stop, uh, I guess putting blockades and, and stopping the the oil pipeline, the development of oil pipelines. And uh, that's what's really got us in such rough shape here. We have no we have moving literally billions of dollars worth of uh, resources. We're the third largest 
uh, holder of resources in the world and we can't move them. And I'm thinking if when this is all over with, if you can just about imagine what the the government, what the, the bottom line, the debt is going to be, mm-hmm. if you were able to, if we were able to sell these, these resources that we're so rich in, do you think that would pay the debt off? That's what we need to do. We need to get back to work and sell our resources. And the government knows that, but we just, we just cannot see why they won't, uh, you know, let us sell out, sell the resources and, and make the economy rich again. The Canadian taxpayers are bearing the brunt and uh, you can about imagine what we're going to have to pay after this is over with. If we could sell things, our, our resources, I think that would go a long way to paying off this debt. Okay, I have to leave it there. I'm out of time, but I really want to thank both of you for your time, and I wish you both the very best. Thanks, thanks for carving out some of your day for this. Thanks to Carly thank Biro you. and Randy Graham. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.